Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript and today we're going to be discussing the document object model. So we'll be going over some uh, objects part of the DOM that we have not before and nodes and how to manipulate them which will be really really exciting. So first as you can see here I have some tags here you do not need to worry about them yet I'll go over them later so that's how it looks. Uh, that will be with the nodes part of this tutorial. So for the document object there's pretty much four objects part of the DOM that we have to deal with and we already learned two, so I'll review them really quickly. In order to access them, we would type in uh, document dot, and then for images, we just type in images. Remember, it's always plural. And then inside the brackets, in order to access the, um, they come up in order. So for every image you create, a new uh, in, uh, element will be created inside your images array or inside the object. So the very first image will be zero, the second one will be one, the third will be two, and so on and so forth. So, uh, information you can uh, fetch from it, uh, the properties such as source, so where it's coming from. Uh, another one that we learned, I believe, in the last video were forms. So, you almost always have one form on your web page. So, you almost always use uh, zero right here. And then you can fetch certain information such as the name or the length, which is how many elements are in there. And you could even go out of the way to specify which element you would like to uh, retrieve information from. So the elements inside a form is like the text boxes or the radio buttons or a check, uh, I already said checkbox. No, I said text box. Yeah, all that stuff. And then you could find out like the value or what the name attribute is or any other kind of information you'd like to get from it. So the next one will be the anchors. So what these are, are your anchor tags that you create, the A's, which are the hypertext links on your website. So for each one you create, uh, a new element will be added. So the very first one will be zero, and the second one that you make, and it's in, in orders you make them in this document, then you can access them. Then uh, certain properties that you can retrieve from it, certain information, could be like the hypertext reference. Uh, you can access the name. You can access the relationship. You can access the target, uh, which the only target I ever used would be for opening in a new tab, which would be underscore blank. But any kind of information you'd like to get and another one is links and you might be thinking whoa weren't you just discussing links well actually I'm discussing these kind of links up here if you make a link tag as such as this and you might have remembered this in the XHTML and CSS when you had to deal with external style sheets so you would type in like the type which is text underscore CSS the relationship would be style sheet then you know the URL for where it is so these are the link tags that I'm talking about now and you can refer to them just like that. So you could type in links and then in order. The first one would be zero, the second would be one, and so on and so forth. And you can pretty much find out very similar information. Uh, the relationship, the, the where it's coming from, if there's media in it, you could even do that as well. So that's pretty cool. And that's about it for that. That's all I really want to go over for that because uh, nodes is a lot more information. So moving on, now nodes. What is a node? Well, as you might have remembered when we were in uh, XHTML, we were learning about parent and child selectors, and it's the exact same, exact same uh, concept. So what the concept is, is how you have these HTML tags that are the parents of both the header and the body tags, while it's the grandparent of those that are, you know, in here, that are inside its children. So you don't have to really worry about that. You don't use the words grandparent or grandchild, but uh, via terminology, that, that is how you would refer to them. Uh, and the header and the body tags are child tags to the HTML tags. Likewise, the meta and the title are ch children of the header tags, and all these tags here are the children of the body tags. At the same time, the, these tags here are siblings of each other because they have the same parent. And the meta and the title are siblings as well. So that all pretty much makes sense. So let's figure out how to access these. So first, let's create a variable and call it parent, and I'll set that equal to, and then again, we'll be accessing the document object, because that's what we're still doing. Then you would type in child nodes. Then for every node that's created, that's these guys right here, uh, you would just throw in another number inside these brackets. So uh, I would put zero, but the problem is, is this HTML tag is actually not my first here. My first is this guy up here, and I don't want to access that guy. So I'll be going to this tag, which is my second. So I'll put in number one, as one is the second. 
followed by a semicolon. So let's create an alert box and let's just type in the word parent. Whoops. And let's type in node name. Now this property of for nodes uh, will just retrieve the name of that element, which is just HTML. So I'll click save and let's see what happens. There it is, HTML. Now what if you want to access children? Well what you could do is you could type in dot and then child nodes again to find the children of this parent, but let's just keep it separate for now. So I'll type in a new variable child and I'll set that equal to document dot child nodes and I want to do the same one there dot then child nodes again and let's go for the very first one so the very first child of my HTML tags is the header while the second one's the body so I have it uh, as such and I can type in child right here so I should get header as a result so and there it is head uh, and you might be thinking well you're referring to the parent, the parent is this, and you're referring to it again. Well, can, can't you just put parent right here? Yes, you can. Just make sure you're not modifying the parent later. Since it's not a constant, you could always accidentally change it later, which means it could be changing what you're referring to and all that complicated stuff. And I'll show you again that it still works. And there's head, so it still works, even if you put parent there. And yes, I did save. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, about it. Um, other ones, other properties could be like node type. If you get a 1, that means you're referring to an element. If you get a 2, that means you're referring to an attribute. And if you get a 3, that means you're referring to text. So since we're referring to an element, we should get 1, and there it is. So that's good. And are there any others? Um, yeah, I guess I'll show you a method. There's a method called has child nodes. So since it's a method, you have to put parentheses afterwards. And basically, this is a Boolean value. It will return true or false, depending whether or not it has children or not. Oh, the header tag here does have children, the made in the title. So it should return true. And it does. There it is. Uh, so I'm actually going to go off. I'm going to get rid of this alert box here and kind of go uh, off on a just a side note uh, for uh, figuring out how to access certain elements on your website quicker. So let's create a variable and I'll call it A for an example. And what if I don't want to type in, you know, all this complicated, all these different arrays and whatnot, all these object names? Well, what you could do is just type in document, so we're still in the document object model. And then I introduced this in the last video. I could type in get element, whoops, by ID. And then within these parentheses, I could type in the ID of whichever of these elements I want to refer to. So if I want to do this h1, I'll do h underscore 1 since that's the ID. Uh, I, I'm actually going to show you another one really quickly here and I'm not going to really use it because I don't really use this one because it's not as flexible. And that's, um, what if, now what if you want to change multiple tags at the same time, like all the p tags? Well what you could do is type in get elements, so now it's plural, by tag name then you would type in the name of the tags, such as the P tags. And that's about it, really. I'm not going to really show that one off, so I'm going to get element again by ID. So let's do P underscore 1 here, shall we? Okay, so now the next thing I would like to show you is how to manipulate uh, different nodes. So what I would like to do here, and uh, we don't have to worry about these anymore. We're not using these anymore for now. Uh, we're going to be introducing inner HTML. This is a great thing to modify the contents on your page without having to refresh the page or or do anything really. And uh, uh, most programmers in JavaScript will use these. So you'll, you'll see these a lot if you view the page source. So we can uh, type in document dot whoops dot write and inside I could type in, oh, I don't need the quotes. I can just type in the variable name here, A, and then whatever property I want to do to this to change what it is. So what if I just did something simple like to uppercase, which is a method, so as parentheses. It should print this P1 with all capitals. But also bear in mind that's going to be separate. It'll be a separate line from this, because this will still print itself. 
So let's check it out. And it does. So it says just some sample text up here, but then it printed it down here in all this kind of whatnot. And you can also do this by using buttons too, and that's what's really cool. So what if you want to change text that's already there? So I have changed this text here. Well, let's figure out how to do that. So the first thing I want to do is create a function. So I'm going to get rid of this. And hmm, let's create a function right here. And I'll call it change. Whoops. Don't want to have any typos. Open curly brace, and I want to close my curly brace down here. So, uh, in order to access function, we'll need a button. So, I don't really need these here anymore, but whatever. Oh, a button has to be outside your script tag. So, I'll go up here, and I'll type in input. I'm misspelling all over the place. Too many years on a laptop. I'm not good with using a regular keyboard on a desktop. So the type will be a button. And what do we want it to say with the value? Um, click here. And we don't need to give it a name or an ID. Let's give it an on click event handler. And it'll access the change uh, function down here. So when you click it, it'll go into the change right here. So it's going to create this variable here by accessing the P1 tag there. Then let's say we want to change it. Well, in order to change it, what you could do is actually set this equal to then whatever text you would like it to change to. So I could just type in, I don't know, changed text. So I click save, and when I refresh the page, here's my button. Now let's see if change this text appears. Oh, whoops, it was that one up there. My bad. Let me uh, change that really quickly. So it's the ID for this one is change. So I'll change this to change right here. And when I refresh the page, um, let's make sure this one changes. Changed text. See, it changed. That's pretty cool. That's that's really cool. You gotta admit that this is what's so exciting is now we can uh, change the element on the page. Now this is if you want to specify, if you as the programmer want to uh, make it specific for what you want the text to appear. Now, what if you want the user to be able to put what they want? So what you could do is create another variable. I'll call it B. And I'll make a prompt box for this. I know, you're probably already thinking, oh my goodness, this is going to be awesome. And it is. So type, uh, just put type, type something, exclamation point. Uh, then we're going to want to change this right here to the variable B. So let's see what happens so I refresh the page when I click this is box comes up that says type something uh, let's put in I don't know what to type so I click OK look at that it appeared there but that's not all you can actually cl click this button again and you can change it again so I can type in Adam well now my name is there now you gotta admit that is pretty cool uh, so so yeah, that's pretty much how you can modify certain nodes. So you are modifying nodes here by accessing them through their ID. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what you can do. As you can see here, you could do it like this, what I'm doing right here, and put this here. But this is a this is a shorthand. And if you're learning JavaScript, they always teach you the longhand. Even if you're in math, they teach you the longhand before they teach you the shorthand. This is a much easier way of you know, figure out exactly what you want to change and whatnot. So yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, and I believe we're just about done with the objects. So I'm pretty excited to move on. So I hope to see you in the next tutorial.